What's up, guys? Bubba the Kid here, back again. Uh, how's everybody doing? You guys like seeing, you always keep telling me, Chris, react to more scary stuff. Uh, do more to the, the scary stories, uh, things like that. Um, and I always do it. You know, I'm like, all right, I'll do it. Uh, I don't know, you guys like seeing me get scared or something? I don't get shook real quick. You know, certain things can make me shorter, but not a lot of things. Um, one of my Irish friends says that all the time. Uh, but no, um, no, I you know I don't I don't get I don't get rattled too quickly. But I'll tell you, Mr. Nightmare, you know, is one of those YouTubers that puts these stories up, and you know, you make you start imagining what's going on in your head and stuff like that. And I'll tell you gets a little trippy and I just said what we're gonna we're gonna watch uh, something from Mr. Nightmare once again um, and uh, <clears throat> it's called three true lockdown horror stories yes no. <laughs> um, now you guys know what I tend to do with uh, Mr. Nightmares I tend to chop chop up his vids when I react to them so basically what I'm saying is you're not gonna see the last story um you wanna go read watch the last story link in the description below for and go watch it there we're just gonna watch the first two and bam there you go uh and that's that's how I do it especially for his stuff uh, but other than that let's let's do this um Mr. Nightmare you son of a bitch <laughs> No, I'm fucking. Up. I would not. I don't mean that. Just, yeah, we're. Let's do this. Here we go. No jump scares. That's that. No sudden jump. See, people think jump scares. No sudden jump scares will fuck me up. Just jump scares where you know it's coming. That don't bother me. Let's do this now. You see, and that music. Right, here we go. I was 16 in my junior year of high school. Okay. I had nine periods in the school day. Fifth period was lunch, and straight from there was my astronomy class. Hey, I had fifth period my lunch. My astronomy too, back class in high was school. actually held in one of the two basement classrooms of the school. My high school was big, there were three floors, and even that wasn't enough to accommodate all the classes offered. So the school built two classrooms in the basement. It was honestly kind of creepy down there when nobody else was around. Yeah, it used would... to be a janitorial area. However, it was remodeled to better resemble a typical hallway. The only thing, there were no intercoms or loudspeakers down in the basement at that time. What? For that reason, no classes were held down there first period for the morning announcements. Everyone referred to this little section of the basement as the chamber. Cham and everyone always tried to get classes Come down on. there just because it was air conditioned and the classes were typically easier. Plus, it had its own bathroom down there. Come on, man. We had a quiz in astronomy that day. Usually, I was one of the first done just because I found the class easy. After I finished my quiz, I texted my friend who was in the other basement classroom to meet me in the bathroom because I was bored. What? He told me okay. I walked out of the classroom and down the small hallway to the bathroom. Okay. A few seconds later, the door opened and my friend JJ entered the bathroom. We were joking around for a while, until JJ checked his phone and said someone texted him saying the school was going on lockdown. But what? We both looked at each other with the same grins. Neither of our teachers saw us leave the classrooms. That meant we had free range of the school while it was on lockdown. Oh, you stupid We fuck. agreed to sneak upstairs and look around the hallways just for the hell of it. The worst that would happen is that we'd explain how we couldn't hear the announcements in the basement classrooms. Upon opening the basement door to the main floor, we were surprised to find all the lights had been turned off. So the hallways were pretty much pitch black aside from the light pouring in from the doors in the lobby. This was legit because usually the lights were left on in the hallways during lockdowns. Something was going down yeah. we didn't know if we were even okay. comfortable walking around now. JJ stepped out a little further into the See, hallway this is where your and I followed kick suit. In and be like, Fuck JJ that. then looked down the hall and said, who's that? I looked, and emerging from the darkness was a man. 
At first, we couldn't tell if he was a teacher or not, but as he got closer, we realized this guy wasn't dressed at all like any staff member. He was dressed like a bum. All right, let's go, I told JJ as we hurried back down to the basement. He surely saw us, whoever he was. We saw both classrooms had their doors shut and lights off, so to avoid making a scene, we decided to hide in the bathroom. I shut the light first thing and then we both went to hide in the corner stall. There was complete silence in the room, no ventilation, no heaters, nothing. Just the sound of me and JJ breathing, and an occasional drip from the sink. The door to the bathroom suddenly opened, and light from the hallway poured into the bathroom for a brief moment. The door shut, and the bathroom was once again pitch black. Me and JJ tried our best to control our breathing. The room was so silent that we could hear somebody walking over to our side of the bathroom. This is some the person stopped and started breathing really heavily, as if they were out of breath. Me and JJ were both scared to death. JJ did something very dumb. He whispered in my ear, we have to crawl out through the other stalls. The room was so silent, however, that even JJ's whisper could be heard from across the room. The heavy Fucking breathing up, outside the stall Fucking stopped, up. and the person tried pressing the stall door in. That was when I whispered, go, go, to JJ. We both crawled under the side wall to the next stall over, and then the next stall, and then finally out to the other side of the bathroom. The person was now full on banging on the stall door. Me and JJ hopped up off the floor, opened the door, and as the light filled the room again, we saw the guy from upstairs in the corner. We pounded on the door to JJ's class. The teacher let us in within seconds. JJ explained everything as the teacher locked the door, mentioning a gun sticking out of the man's pocket. I was shocked to hear this because I didn't see a gun, but I went along with it anyway. Usually a bunch of high school students would be laughing their asses off at two students causing a scene like this, but I noticed all the kids sitting in the corner looked concerned. A sudden bang at the door made everyone jump and a couple of girls squeal out of fear. JJ, the teacher, and I could see the man standing at the door, looking through the window while trying the doorknob. After a few bangs on the door out of what seemed to be anger, he turned and walked down the hallway back to the stairs. We don't know how much longer the lockdown went on for, but for over an hour we sat in silence in the room, other than the teacher occasionally asking me and JJ questions in a very concerned tone, shaking his head after everything we would tell him. Eventually, somebody from upstairs called the teacher and he instructed all of us to single file, walk up the stairs and out of the building, oh, you know where we would be greeted by there. cops. Me and JJ did the best we could at describing the man to the cops and to the dean. One of the cops patted me on the back and we were sent off to go home. After this incident, the school installed cameras everywhere and ramped up the security budget. This incident never got media attention, so honestly, we never found out if police caught the guy. That's fucked up. I'm convinced that man had no other intentions but to kill us then and there in that bathroom stall. That's fucked up. I see this music ain't helping, man. And it's fucking light out. I, and I'm still getting a little creeped out. Yo, come on, man. Our next story. I'm a retired New Jersey police officer. Okay. Throughout my 20 years in the force, the most disturbing call I ever received was for a school lockdown happening at a nearby middle school, of which I'll leave out the name for legal reasons. It happened on a stormy, dark day. My car number was called on the radio to respond to a lockdown, where a suspicious looking man was seen stepping out from a white van parked behind a school a and walking into the back here, door man. by the boys' locker room. I pulled up to the back parking lot of the school, right next to the white van. Nobody was inside and all the doors and trunk were locked. I opened the red back door that entered into the gym hallway, right by the locker rooms. The main lights had been turned off so the whole inside of the school was dark. I unholstered the flashlight from my belt and used it to navigate the halls. I made it to the lobby of the school where a woman emerged from the front office quietly telling me to check the boys locker room but to be careful because the person might be armed. I called for backup on my radio and was assured backup was already on the way. 
I made it back to the hallway I entered from, where I found the boys' locker room right next to the exit. I pushed it open very quietly. There were no windows in the rooms, therefore there was no light whatsoever in that locker room, only the light provided by the flashlight. There was a white noise in the room, some kind of vent on the ceiling blowing air, but even over that, I was hearing faint scratching type noises or little dings on the locker doors from the other side. I was supposed to make my presence as a police officer known, but honestly, scared. I was just too scared. Yep. The tension in the room was insane. That dude's too scared. I held my flashlight in one hand and my gun in the other as I snuck to the other side of the locker room. It seemed like wherever I was in the room, the dings and thuds would be coming from the other side. I was standing in the corner of the locker room, right by the door to the bathroom, when the sound of someone slamming a locker door from another room made me jump out of my skin. I went in the direction Fuck. where I heard the I slam heard, to just, find out uh. that it was from the boys' football team locker room. There was no door separating the main locker room from the football locker room. The lockers in here were also three times the size. Yo, what the hell is this guy? How big is this I guy? I finally had the nerve to make my presence known by shouting police. After shouting, a kid started screaming help from somewhere in the room. It was very muffled though. The kid pounded on a locker okay, door on the other side of the row I was in. Music. When I found out that the boy was trapped inside of a locker, I felt sick in my stomach. I told him I'd be right back once again calling for backup while running outside to where the white van was. It was gone. My biggest mistake was not getting the plate number first thing. I told dispatch to be on lookout for a suspicious white van. I ran back into the school and instructed the staff in the front office to end the school day and to send somebody with a key to the locker room to get the boy out of the locker. The boy was held by the man with a knife on his back, as I speculate the man was quietly trying to get the 12-year-old boy to his van. The boy was bleeding on his arm from the man cutting him while resisting. Fuck, man! The man's van was spotted a week later in a 7-Eleven parking lot, where he was arrested after being properly identified. Good! Good! Whoa! Fucking pedophile! Alright, y'all, um... <laughs> we going to end it right there. Um, like I said before, um, chop this up. You want to go check out that last story. Um, check the link in the description below for the this vid. And Mr. Nightmare's channel. Go subscribe. Good stuff. Means good content. Uh, creeps me out from time to time. Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's freaking daylight out and got me creeped out. That music alone just creeped me out. Um, so let, let, let me, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, the first two stories. All right, so the... Locked down with the two boys. Um, fuck that shit. Okay, I don't... Yeah, okay. Your school goes in a lockdown. And trust me, I've been in an occasion where my high school has... My high school had one time went into lockdown, too. Um, you don't go out, try to investigate, or try to play some kind of games... Your instincts kick in, dude. I'm telling you, your instincts kick in. You stay wherever you're supposed to stay. Um, I don't play that shit. Nope. <laughs> um, whatever, whoever that guy was, he was he trying to hurt them? I don't know. They say he looked like a bum, uh, you know, I'm like a homeless guy. How do you get into school? And how nobody not catch this guy? All right. Whatever. Next story with the cop. What can I say? Even cops get scared. Like, he even said, I was scared. You know, I'm, I was scared. I was supposed to police. He couldn't do it. Uh, what, I'm fucking pedophiles, man. Fuck that shit. Uh, whatever. Good thing they caught him. Uh, but other than that, y'all, yeah, man, I'm going to end this right here and now. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, like I said, link in the description below for Mr. Nightmare's channel and for this vid. So if you want to watch that last story, have at it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching my reaction. Uh, give a like, thumbs up, and leave your comment section below. I'm going to watch something nice now so I can get this that shit out of my head. Uh, but other than that, this is my morning kid.
Peace. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in for my reactions. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any requests, y'all, don't forget to provide me with the link and along with the hashtag slogan, React Please Chris. That is hashtag React Please Chris. And as always, this is Mom Vernon Kid saying peace. I'm out.